So when the Mac Davis uh, died uh, this week, uh, many positive thoughts when he's way great singer, songwriter, but he was also a very underrated actor. So we're going to talk today about his co-starring role in a movie that uh, really has been underrated over the years, and I rarely do something on Nick Nolte because he's not uh, my favorite actor uh, by a million miles. But this movie, him and uh, in uh, Mac Davis and Nolte had a good performance. Now, it's the movie uh, North Dallas 40. Now, it's based on the best-selling 1973 novel by former Dallas Cowboy Peter Gint, kind of loosely based on his time with the Cowboys. Now, uh, it was Davis's first film role, and probably as impressive as an uh, opening performance in a career has ever been. Now, uh, calling it a sports uh, comedy drama would be kind of a stretch, because it also looks at a corporate aspect of uh, big sports, not only what happened on the field, but what uh, happened off it. Now, it also starred uh, Charles Durning, Bo Svensson, John Mutuzak, Steve Forrest, G.D. Spradlin, Dabney Colvin, and Savannah Smith-Boucher in the female lead. Now, uh, it uh, centers on wide receiver Philly Elliott, who plays for a late 1970s professional football team based in Dallas called the North Dallas Bulls, of course, which closely resembles the Cowboys. And there's little inside uh, notches in the, uh, the supporting actors to some of the legends of the, of the Cowboys from like 65 to about 78. Now, uh, Elliot uh, is considered to possess the best hands in the game. The aging Elliot has been benched and relies heavily on painkillers to get through. Now, Elliot and popular quarterback Seth Maxwell are outstanding players, but he also characterized the drug six an alcohol fuel party atmosphere of that era. Now, to me, the uh, wide receiver is more based, maybe of amalgam of uh, Drew Pearson, Fred Belitnikoff, and Peter Gent. Because I know what he took the book, but there was aspects of the Raiders and uh, in, in the movie, and also the Dolphins. And if you have to be a pure NFL fan in the 1970s, they get it. Now, in, in the movie, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Nick Nolte character wants only to play the game, retire, and live on a horse farm with his girlfriend Charlotte, who appears to be financially independent, but has no interest in football whatsoever. Now, the Bulls play for the iconic uh, Coach Strouder, based on Tom Landry, who turns a blind eye to anything that his players may be doing off the field, or anything that assistant coaches and trainers condone to keep those players in the game. Now, the coach is focused on players' tendencies, a quantitative measurement of their performance kind of mimic what you see in analytics right now and seems less concerned about the human aspect of the game and the players. Now one player, Shaddock, finally erupts to assistant coach Johnson. Every time I call it a game, you call it a business. And every time I call it a business, you call it a game. Now Mac Davis plays the lead quarterback in the movie that's being uh, unsurped by the new upcoming rookie, sort of like uh, Craig Morton to uh, Roger Staubach. Or maybe uh, John Unitas to, uh, you, you know, uh, Dan Fouts. Now, the coach has manipulated Elliot to convince a younger injured rookie on the team to start using painkillers to hide their injuries. Now, Elliot's nonconformist attitude encourages the coach rat more than once. And at one point, the coach informs Elliot that a continuing attitude could affect his future with the Bulls. After the Bulls lose their final game of the season in Chicago, Elliot learns that a Dallas detective has been hired by the Bulls to follow him. The turn up proof of his marijuana use and a sexual relationship with a woman who intends to marry team executive Emmett Hunter, brother of owner Conrad Hunter. Though the detective witnessed quarterback Seth Maxwell engaging in similar behavior, he pretends not to have recognized him. After they tell him that he is to be suspended while to pay pending a league hearing, Elliot convinced that the entire investigation is merely a pretext to allow the team the same money as he contract, quits the game of football uh, for good. Now, there's a whole bunch of like inside insights uh, I've never read uh, North Dallas 40. Peter Gent, to me, was just a marginal uh, player with the Cowboys. Not as important as some of the other wide receivers. But uh, there's aspects of some of the rumors of football in here. Homosexuality, uh, org orgies, uh, again, drug use, manipulation of athletes through uh, drugs and injections. Basically, turning the back, like the old Dwayne Thomas incident with Dallas, where two years he was going through some type of mental illness augmented by drugs, and he ignored him the first season when he won the Super Bowl, but the second season he started acting up again, he got rid of him. So, uh, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. But as a Dallas Cowboy fan, it's a, it's a very interesting look at how Dallas 
made these incidents not say more hidden but all the teams the NFL was doing something weird in the 1970s even uh, you know uh, prostitutes waiting for certain players in certain cities on the road I know that for a fact not going to say what quarterbacks but you can pretty well figure it out now uh, to, to many North Dallas 40s while they considered a classic sports film to me it's a three and a half out of five it's not classic level but it's watchable but you rarely see it on television anymore Maybe because of the potential lawsuit because half the players are retired. Now, uh, again, the Seth Maxwell character, for me, uh, he played it like, uh, Beck Davis played it strong, more like Danny Don Meredith, but it was more the Craig Morton situation because Staubach wasn't around when Moore murdered it. Uh, he, he was going to unsurp Meredith because he was five years in uh, the Navy. Now, uh uh, but Meriton once said, if I had known uh, uh, Ghent was as good as he says he was, I would have thrown him to more, because in the book, uh, uh, Ghent's doppelganger is much, much better receiver than Ghent ever was. Anyway, so it did very well with the critics. Uh, what, it was sort of Golden Globe bait, but it wasn't hit. But Mac Davis uh, seemed to me to be so natural in a part, I'm very surprised there wasn't a TV version of this. <coughs> but at the time, no major network that was covering the NFL or showing the NFL was going to show one-hour programming of the NFL to take away uh, ratings. And don't forget, in U.S. major network, the major ratings are in the fall and winter where football is uh, more prominent. Right? Now, uh, as of April 2, 2020, North Dallas Forty holds a rating of 83% based on uh, 24 uh, reviews. Now, there's many, many differences from the book to novel, but it didn't really hurt the box office. It made almost $3 million in, his, in his opening weekend, and the following weekend, the, the box office went up, actually, to, three, uh, to almost over $3 million. After 32 days, it had growth uh, nearly $20 million, and then uh, later went on to a final total of $26 million in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, the only movie that's similar to it, in some ways is any given Sunday which on certain days I watch it as an underrated movie and certain days I watch it it's just uh, Oliver Stone uh, true to roof right? now uh, the the book has more graphic sex and violence uh, and well as drug and o o alcohol overtones but uh, this movie uh, is more comedic it's almost a PG-13 version of uh, the book now uh, Cinematography by Paul Norman is actually is quite good. It looks like a, kind of a regular, you know, a camera to camera NFL you would see now. Now, uh, Ghent wrote the scene in the soundtrack with Ted Ka uh, Kochoff and producer uh, Frank uh, Yablans and Ted Ka Kochoff, uh, you know, uh, directed it. Like I said, three and a half out of five. The music by John Scott is not too bad as well. And the Paramount uh, gave it a kind of a two hour not say mini epic uh, style but for me uh, it ranks probably as a top 25 football movie of all time and there's been a lot of good football movies in recent years obviously it's no Friday Night Lights but uh, you watch football movies and you kind of steal a little bit from North Dallas 40 and there's a interesting Dabney Coleman joke where he uh, he uh, he kind of ribs one of the players that going to the CFL. He said, you speak Canadian, don't you? So, uh, you know, it's if you're a football fan, you get the movie. And if you're not a football fan, you get the movie. But I know so much inside information for Dallas, I can't say any more because I don't want lawsuit territory in this podcast. By the way, uh, this is a return to our uh, uh, screenshots uh, column after a break of a couple of weeks. We're glad we're back. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, or subscribe. We also take requests, but I'm sorry I'm getting this late, but Mac Davis's passing uh, was part of a very busy week in Canada and the States with Trump and the uh, COVID uh, lockdowns across Canada in the second wave, so I'm glad I could get to it this morning. Mac Davis, I never met him, but if I did, i say, listen, you did well in this. You, you, you showed your talent, and Mac Davis is a very, very, or was, God bless his soul, a very charismatic individual. Everybody I talked to that met him or knew him in passing said he was a type of person. You met him once, and he seemed, you know, uh, this is a compliment I mentioned about Derek Hamilton, my friend, his friends with Lee Majors. Uh, a lot of people said he was kind of like Lee Majors, you know, happy-go-lucky, very professional, but very good at what he did, and Mac Davis was good at everything he did.
I would like to see Mac Davis uh, do like a Chuck Norris type movie. That'd be great. But, you know, that, that ship has sailed, unfortunately. So, thanks for listening. Have a good day. Keep your stick in the ice. Bye.